Hi everyone and welcome back to The Fleet Practice. My name is Tatiana and today we're going to be talking a little bit about some more practice techniques you can use. This is going to be the first video of a little bit of a series on practice and practice techniques. I have been a little bit quiet for a while and I will apologize properly for this at the end of this video so those of you who are either new to the channel or don't really care <laughs> don't have to sit through my long winded apology. Let's go check it out. <laughs> essentially are, as I see it, kind of three types of practice. There's note learning, there's kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, like note perfecting or like music perfecting, you know, where you're really working the music, and then there's performance practice. So we're going to deal with mostly today the note learning part. Uh, just to cover the other two briefly, we will talk about this in later videos, so stay tuned for those. The note, I've got to find, figure out a better term for this. Maybe you guys can comment below so in the next video I have a better term than note perfecting, music perfecting. Anyway, basically the idea is once you've kind of learned the nitty gritty notes, you kind of have a basic idea of what notes you're playing and you know, the basic structure of the piece, dynamics, all that. Then comes the real like polishing, perfecting part where you are cleaning up messy runs or cleaning up little passages that you're still struggling with or you're really kind of working the music, adding all the proper phrasing and dynamics and emotions and all that stuff. The pra performance practice comes when you really know the piece very well and now you're practicing just performing it for yourself in front of a camera, in front of friends, or you're practicing actually the feeling of playing it from beginning to end in even perhaps a bit of a nervous or pressure situation. By far the most frustrating part, I think, is the note learning part. I remember I used to get like a new piece and I'd be excited for a whole of five minutes until I actually put the piece on the music stand and I'm like, oh my goodness, what do I do? This is, you know, it's difficult. Like, how do you actually go about learning notes? Guys, be careful that you don't choose repertoire that is too difficult for you. This is really important. I think if you are choosing stuff where, you know, like, I don't know, 60% of the piece is just out of your technical ability, it becomes frustrating and really pointless. You want to choose things that, you know, you can play a lot of it, sight read or, or play through a lot of it, but there's a substantial portion that you know you're going to really get stuck into and, you know, have to kind of grapple with. One of my favorite techniques to use with my beginner students especially, but I definitely think this is valid for all levels of players. Like I, I use this for many pieces and still do for many pieces, especially when the rhythms are just tricky. Just clap and say the rhythms. Now what I like to do is I like to just clap the beat with my hands and keep that beat going really solidly and then actually say the rhythms on a ta with my tongue because in that way I'm actually really practicing the tonguing. I'm really practicing the ta 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 and if you can even include the articulations in that, that is even better because then you're really practicing in the articulations. But if that's already a little bit too complex, take it back a notch, just do the rhythm and then add the articulation once you feel comfortable with the rhythms. So just as a very silly little example, I'm going to just, you know, pretend I'm learning Old MacDonald had a farm or something. So I'm, I'm thinking ta 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 Well, I wasn't doing that right. You don't do what I just did, which is clap on the long beat. Keep the beat going solidly the whole way through. Once you've done that, once you've just clapped the rhythm, got the beat going, um, then what you can do is you can, well, add the articulation if you haven't yet. And then what you can do is you can just take your flute like this and you can just do the fingers. I like to rest it on my shoulder like that and I just do the fingers, the notes, so that you just, you can even say the note names out loud. So like A, B, C, whatever, whatever, and do the fingers like this. Then you take your flute and you actually play. Why I find this process so useful is because you're adding layers of difficulty always. So you're first figuring out the rhythm, which is the most important thing, I think, in music. Maybe I'm wrong, but, you know, rhythm is really what makes a piece sound like a piece. Um, so you get your rhythm right, then you add the layer of figuring out what the notes are, adding the notes, and only then doing the fingers, and then adding the sound. So you've got these multiple layers that you keep adding on, rather than just like overwhelming yourself with all the information at the same time which is crazy. Actually, why would you do that to yourself when we don't have to, right? What's so important in the note learning process, don't try and play the entire piece, you know, all in one go. I mean, if you want to challenge yourself with a bit of sight reading, that's fine. 
you can try it and also sometimes you know we do want to play the piece we like the piece or whatever we like oh, i just want to play this piece but really if you want to help yourself practice in small little sections at a time two bars one bar maybe even just half a bar whatever it takes whatever is short enough that you can really concentrate and focus for that amount of time and not feel overwhelmed a really cool strategy that i used um, when I was at university, I used to kind of like learn lots and lots of studies and etudes, as I'm sure most of you do. She started at the end of the piece, start at the back. So, you, you know, what generally happens, we play a piece and we start at the beginning, we play over and over and over and we get really good at the beginning. And then kind of towards the end, we lose focus and energy and all those things. And the end kind of tends to be the most weak. So sometimes I just like to kind of build that process in from the beginning and just start right at the end and work my way backwards. Um, you know, you can get quite structured about this. You can really, sometimes I used to do like line by line. I used to go line by line, even if it didn't make that much musical sense. Uh, sometimes I'd make it make musical sense, you know, go with kind of more or less line by line, but with the phrases, you can decide how, I don't know, musically OCD you are about that. If that's even a thing. What I find really helpful in this process is decide how much you want to do each day and decide you know, give yourself a goal, a realistic goal, when you want to have learnt the notes, the basic notes by, when, when you want to have kind of worked your way through the whole piece. You don't need to learn an entire piece in a day. It's unrealistic, overwhelming and ridiculous. Um, I mean, if you can, go, great. I mean, some, there are sometimes we have to learn things really, really fast. But especially when you're learning this process of how to learn notes, you want to set yourself a realistic goal each day. So maybe say like two lines of a specific piece or if you're really a beginner maybe even just a bar or two bars of the piece you want to learn in a day and have it really good and polished and you know more or less in there the next day you will come back to it and you will find that you've forgotten some stuff and you're going to have to kind of re-go and do some steps again and relearn those notes to a point but over time it goes into your long-term memory and you got it you sort it so you kind of have to like trust in the process a little bit here it's endlessly frustrating i warned you in the beginning you really have to be patient next level patient i also just want to say one of the most important things in this process is speed how fast are you trying to play this thing play things slowly and i know teachers always like slow practice and you're like oh i hate slow practice and my teacher's just telling me to practice slow because she thinks i'm bad or can't play it but i you know no my friends your brain your poor sweet brain can only focus on so much at a time it can only handle so much at a time so please be gentle and kind to yourself and just allow your brain a little bit of time to think that's really it you want to play as slowly as you need to so that you can think about what you're doing i think you can save yourself a lot of time and trouble if you get into a habit of playing things correctly the first time and not playing it so fast that you're making mistakes from the very beginning i find you know we practice in the mistakes almost immediately which is ridiculous and crazy like rather play it slowly and correctly and don't make the mistake than play it too fast and make a mistake and already you're learning a mistake like i think this was like a huge like mind shifting moment for me when i realized i was actually practicing in my mistakes from the get-go and i'd create problems that weren't there just because i was playing it too fast and being impatient so slowly guys slowly what I really will recommend as well is etudes and studies. This is such an amazing way to improve your technique and to learn how to learn notes very fast in kind of like a musically low pressure environment, if that makes sense. Like etudes are not the most musically complex things that exist. Um, they can be a lot of fun, but they really teach you how to learn notes really quickly and fast and efficiently. So set yourself a goal maybe just like one etude a week and they can be short like you can you can start with those like you know short little etudes i have a list of etudes on my website page i'm going to link you guys below basically it's a list i've tried to kind of organize them into beginner easy beginner intermediate advanced and like really super virtuoso etudes and studies and all these wonderful etudes are free completely legally available over imslp do check what country you're in and all those like legal requirements and stuff but from the best of my knowledge all those etudes are freely available so please feel free to go check that out and use it and play it and maybe you know 
set yourself some goals about moving through those etudes. Little word, my big apology, ta-da, here it comes. I have been so incredibly busy, I'm doing lots of really exciting stuff. I've got some amazing footage on its way from my trip still in the USA. Uh, I've got lots of new cool ideas, hopefully new resources and possibilities and opportunities for all of you that I am making available. So it has been a busy two months of planning and organizing and structuring and restructuring and strategizing and all these things to really step up this space for all of you. So I am really sorry, except my apologies for my quietness for those of you who, you know, have have been concerned. I haven't left you, I am still here, so I look forward to seeing how this whole thing grows. Until then everyone, happy practicing and see you soon.